Hey guys, Andrew Chen here, and in this one we'll be talking about our component design and a few problems that might be apparent if you just got a combo. Uh, what we really have is four components, graphics, toolbar, right toolbar, and the transformer component. Uh, and I didn't write the transformer component, but actually the main, there's like main three. And in our application, this is our application, this is the graphics stage, or this is the graphics component. Um, this is the toolbar, and then this is the right toolbar. Now, it is really intuitive, right? Like, these three things are separate. And so we put that into components. Uh, but there's definitely ways that they are communicating with each other. And so, here's how they are communicating with each other. But first of all, let's actually watch what they're doing. We drag something from the toolbar, and then when we drop it, it seems like it gets into the graphics component. And then, let me do something. We select something from the graphics component, and then it seems like we trigger something in the we trigger something in the right toolbar component. And then if we click something on the right toolbar component, it map stuff back to the graphics component it seems like um so before getting into what are actually passed back and forth and the properties or methods or so um let me talk about how we are rendering the stuff here on the graphics component so if you recall from last time when we made the um when we made the little snapback ring circle a little application the way we did it was to create two distinct circles and this one like and then giving them properties and then two distinct circles right and then the second one has the thing draggable and then we gave it a an on drag end event in order to tell it to snap back into place so that's how we did it um but the question is how do we know how many circles that our user is going to put now exactly we don't and so the way we have to be doing this is to store the attributes is to have a double array called circles maybe in the state and then each time the 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 the, the user creates a new circle it pushes at the end of the array and then and then in the rendering, we don't directly write out what we want to render, but we do this dot state dot circles dot map each circle, and then create a new combo object with the attribute that is in that is from the state, right? So with that being said, um, the way that the toolbar is communicating communicating to the graphics component is that whenever we drop the thing. It is actually appending uh, a new circle at the end of the maybe the circle state or the rectangles same thing for the rectangles whatever and yeah and when we change this is also actually what was I gonna say uh forgot but now on to how the graphics component is communicating with the right toolbar component. Uh, it might be a little... It might not be what you think. There's actually only the graphics component communicating with the right toolbar component, which might be uh, kind of weird, right? Because it seems like when we click the right toolbar, it triggers an action in the graphics component. Um, but the way we're doing this is that whenever we select a shape, we are storing this in the graphics component state uh, and we're storing the selected shapes name and the right toolbar is able to receive this name and it's also going to receive the entire stage from the graphics components and then when we click something here what we're doing is to using the stage that is passed down and then the name that is passed down 
we we do stage dot find one using the selected shapes name and then now we get reference to the shape so then we can do shape dot set attribute to the whatever color that we selected and so there's no mapping back to whatever's going on here and if we think about this in Kamba, so instead of saying directly component and introducing a little bit of code and how they'll be laid out um, of course these two things are visibly they make sense that they're built in Kamba, right this thing right here is definitely built with Kamba. Uh, this thing this toolbar thing right here is also built with Kamba, and so they will be included in the stage and this toolbar thing seems to be distinct from this thing and so they are in different layers and so this layer will have the toolbar component and this layer will have the graphics component and the transformer thing that is to the right of the graphics component is actually just this thing right here and don't think about it too much it's a it's also a native um combo object it's also a combo object and so you know it belongs to a stage then the right toolbar is obviously outside of everything because it's not built with comma and uh, yeah it looks like it's in stage but we're just positioning absolutes so that it looks like it's over the stage or in the stage okay but if you recall something that i said earlier oh by the way this part welcome to skip this part it might get confusing it seems like we can just store everything in the stage and then you know we can do set attribute so that we can directly manipulate the stage and you know not not having to manipulate with the with the state like and um, with the attributes of the state like we had to do right we can just play with the stage and then the stage can be mapped to stuff and then we can render it but uh it seems like we can do this but there is no directly adjacent to jsx method but the main problem is that this is not really necessary right we we don't have to do it we don't have to store everything down we don't have to store everything down we can just store the things that we know is required and necessary and then when we're rendering it we create new objects so that is how we did it earlier we store the attributes of the stuff of the rectangles in the state but we don't directly store the state objects uh, so then when we render it we can give it the attributes and create a new rectangle objects from it um, and this becomes important if you're thinking about something like redo slash undo for smaller applications it might be okay um, to directly store the objects but if you're doing something like redo or undo you know you have like an array that might be like length 300 depending on how many actions if the user took 300 actions and of each index of that array is a stage objects uh, your website I mean your users I mean your memory might not like it right so that's why we're storing the attributes only in the state and then later uh, mapping that into an object and uh, and then rendering that so that's it for this video um I, I just got confused by myself really so this is something confusing if you think about it uh, so don't think about it too much because we will be doing it um the proper way which is doing what is only necessary in the state all right thank you